We are four subscribers away from 100,000. How does it feel? It's just crazy. We get comments here and there like saying, you're so close, you're so close. And I always just respond with the mind blown emoji because my mind is blown. It's, it's just surreal. I don't know. It's, it's crazy. <gasps> oh my gosh. <gasps> Oh no! Oh no, we lost one! <laughs> I knew this would happen! <laughs> wow, 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 wow! <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Adam. And I'm Catherine, and together we're Adventures of A Plus K. And welcome to our YouTube hey. channel! That's so weird to say! <laughs> Three and a half years ago when we started this channel, we thought it would just be a fun thing to do in addition to our website to hopefully help others travel. We thought we would be lucky to have 100 subscribers and never imagined it would grow into what it is today, become part of our full-time jobs, or that we'd ever hit 100,000 subscribers! And that's all because of you, so thank you. Whether you've been here from the very beginning, been here for the long haul, or you're a new subscriber, we are so appreciative of your support. Over the years, we've learned so much about filming, editing, storytelling, working together, traveling. It has been full of many, many highs, handful of lows, and many moments where we were like, what the heck are we doing? We should just quit this. But you guys truly have kept us going. Building a community of people who support us has helped us more than you can ever imagine. And we've gotten to know so many of you guys by your names and your avatars. And every week, we are so excited to see what does Blank say about the video this week. So it's been really fun for us. We weren't really sure how to celebrate this huge milestone, so we figured a Q&A would be fun. We asked you guys on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube for some questions, so thank you very much for submitting all of them. We're unfortunately not going to be able to get to all of them, but we have done a few Q&As in the past, as well as a Van Life FAQ blog post, posts about our gear, and a post about traveling with the dog on our website that may answer some of your questions, and so we'll link to those below. We'll also make sure to put timestamps in the description in case you only want to hear a few of them or want to skip around. And if we did not get to your question, please ask us in the comments below and we will answer it. All right. Let's do Are this. Are you ready? The most heated, the most juicy, the most controversial questions are coming at you right oh, now. Oh, they're not. They're not they're really. Not. They're, they're fun, but they're not, <laughs> they're not any of those. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting with the personal questions. What is something people don't know about you? I thought of four different things that you may not know based on our videos. The first one is I played lacrosse for all four years of high school. I also love to rap, especially Super Bass by Nicki Minaj. I will not She's be really doing good. it right now, but I'm pretty <laughs> good. I also had bunion surgery on my left foot right after high school, and I was voted class clown my senior year of high school, but I think it's just because I asked people to vote for me. I don't think I actually was the class clown. I was like, I was such a good student. Like, I, I wasn't like goofing off. I think I just thought I was funny, so. You know, I had a really hard time with this question. Just looking back, I just could not think of anything exciting. Maybe I'm just so boring. I don't know. Um, but maybe keen observers out there maybe have picked up that I'm left-handed. Um, but now that I think about it, I think I did come up with oh. one. It's not that exciting or crazy. But uh, I remember in school that I got perfect attendance. Like Oh, that's good. Six, seven years in a row, like a lot. I, I never miss school. I, I don't ever get sick or anything, so I just was always there. But other than that, I mean, I've told a lot of like the things that might be interesting. I love to play golf. I went to Australia by myself for a few months. Other than that, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> How old are you and what are your signs? I'm 34 and a Scorpio. And I am 29. I will be 30 in August. Woo! Mm -hmm. And I am a Leo. Do you have any siblings? I have two younger brothers. I believe they're 27 and almost 26, but my math could be wrong. <laughs> You're looking at the one and only. The one and only. <laughs> Adam Frazier. What fictional character do you feel you're most like and why? I always like to compare myself to Jim Halpert from The Office. He, uh, he's kind of a quiet, more mellow guy. That's how I am. But when he speaks, he's 
pretty witty and funny and I like to think that I remember in fifth grade the teacher said I was really witty so I'll take that one that goes back to the other first question <laughs> but I used to work at a bank also and uh, you know working in an office you have a button-up shirt and a tie and pants and they were it was you know like the 2000s so they're like kind of baggy and frumpy and that's kind of how he dresses so I don't know, that's, that's my answer and this one thing that people say on YouTube a lot is I, I remind them of Pam. So Jim and Pam right Perfect. here. I have no idea why people say that. I don't think I look like her. I'm not sure what about me gives Pam vibes, but I love her, so I will take it. <laughs> but I didn't really know if that was a good answer, so I asked my best friend of 22 years what she thought. And I have to read it, because I don't know. She said, Leslie Nope from Parks and Rec, which also love her. You're kind, positive, giving, and determined, and goofy like she is. So I'll happily Accurate. take that one. <laughs> what breed is Kona? Kona is very much a mutt. We think she's Pitt, Jack Russell, and Dachshund, which I don't know if there's, besides her siblings, any other dog out there that's a combination of those. So, a very unique mix. A very crazy mix. Yeah. If Kona was an ice cream flavor, what would she be? This was one of our favorite questions that we got, and so the flavor that we came up with that I think would best, best accurately describe her would be the kitchen sink. She's got so much going on in there. <laughs> it it's, yeah. It would be like one of those flavors, like mac and cheese ice cream, that you're like, I don't know if that's good, but then you like it. Yeah. Kona, we'll say this, Kona gets a very good edit on the vlogs. Mm -hmm. Kona has a lot of behavioral problems, and we don't shy away from talking about that, but we don't want to put that in our videos because we already experienced so much embarrassment in public with her like reacting at stuff, and it's just mortifying, so we don't want to put that online either. So Kona gets the sweet edit, and she is a very sweet dog, but she... Just has a lot of she lot of issues. Spicy. She can be very spicy, so she'd be like a sweet and spicy mm -hmm. ice cream with lots of weird bits in there, like a and... chocolate covered uh, pepper or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, bits in there. Yeah, so I don't know. She <laughs> would just be like a really random weird mix of stuff, mm -hmm. but you you like it a lot, but sometimes you may not like and it. And you don't know what you're biting into. <laughs> you don't know what you're gonna get. Yeah, yeah she's she can unpredictable. Be very unpredictable. Yeah, that's a good one. There we, go. we do love her. She's very sweet, but yeah, yeah she has her issues. But don't we all? <laughs> We're now going to get into the YouTube specific questions, which these can get really long winded. Um, so bear with us. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for work and how do you split up tasks for A plus K? We had quite a few questions about what we do for work and if we still have full time jobs. So we're going to attempt to cover our work history real quick. <laughs> Before van life, Catherine was in event marketing for various tech companies. And then I was a teacher and coach. And then when we hit the road, she was able to keep her same position because it was remote. And then I taught VipKid, which is teaching English to students online in China. And then I did some various web design jobs on the side there. And then all the while we were working on A plus K full time, which looking back is just crazy because it was a lot. Yeah, we worked very early in the morning to very late at night, worked nonstop, which I guess to be honest is still how still it is. <laughs> <laughs> but in June, we finally, last June, we finally were making enough money or it was going in the trajectory of making enough money that we felt we could replace my income. So I quit my corporate job. And then a month or so later, Adam mm -hmm. quit VipKid just because the early mornings, like 3 a.m., we're just going to impact our ability to film and just be flexible with our work schedule so he quit that and we're now both doing a plus k totally full time which is crazy yeah. as for the tasks we do we both do like a random assortment so i'm gonna cheat because i sometimes forget what all we do because it's a lot sometimes but i do photography video editing social media i respond to emails and instagram i manage any partnerships and i edit and finalize our blog posts I manage the website, I handle the relationship with our bookkeeper and accountant, I do the music on our videos, uh, I do Pinterest, I do outreach for various brand uh, partnerships we get here and there. And there's one more. Oh, and I also respond to comments on YouTube, which is a lot of fun. And then I draft, the, uh, I draft our blog posts for our website. And we both try to split up a lot of like the researching and planning of videos. Mm -hmm. It just kind of depends on what we have going on, but we're both very involved in that process. So we, you know, what we want the video to be like, what we want to do. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what we do. We're now self-employed and, uh, it's hard. <laughs> it's a cool feeling though. It's, it's very cool. cool to not have a boss. Yeah, it, it's, it's been an adjustment. Yeah. We're not even a year in yet, mm -hmm. but we wouldn't want it any other way. I never want to work for someone else again. We've learned it. a lot. Like we didn't know anything about like bookkeeping and stuff like taxes. that and taxes and, and yeah. Now we know a little more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the hardest part of being content creators? 
I'm gonna try to keep this one as brief as possible because I have a lot of feelings and what we say definitely does maybe doesn't apply to everyone but for us personally one of the hardest things is just having no work-life balance especially being travel content creators on the outside this looks like a very very fun job like a non-stop vacation and it is a very fun job we're very very thankful for it we want to make that very clear but it is a lot of work a lot more work than I think people realize so I guess the best way to explain it is when y'all are watching and you decide to go replicate what we do and you get to go on a hike and you're going out to eat you're just like doing that for fun you might snap a few photos but you're just enjoying the scenery for us we're like all right we gotta set up the tripod we gotta get this shot all right what do we have to say here about this historical thing you know okay the food let's talk about the flavors of the food um you know we I get we got to get photos we have to get social media content we have to take notes so we can write a guide on it so when we're on a hike we're not just hiking we're working the entire time and while we definitely enjoy it and the excitement and joy you see in our videos is definitely genuine that is how we truly are feeling in the moment you're seeing that the edited version of that adventure and what you don't see is all the work that goes in between all of those shots, um, which we love doing it. We're very passionate about it, but it's just different. And so I think going from traveling just for fun to traveling for work has been an adjustment because we truly don't ever do anything that's not on camera. We maybe will go like hit a tennis ball or take Kona, take Kona on walks and stuff, but we like don't actually go do fun things just for pure fun and not for work. And that's our own fault. Because, we gotta get better at that. Yeah, it's our own fault. We, we are trying to do too much and we don't want to cut back because we want to do everything, but we're learning that we want to cut back more. And I think next year our focus is going to be to scale back a bit so we can have more time to rest because if we're being honest, it, it wears on us big time, but we're also, we love doing it. So it's, it's hard. It's hard to balance it when you want to do more, but you also want to sleep. So. Yeah. But going back to, uh, kind of comparing to like an average traveler, you go out and do that hike or go eat somewhere and, you can get all this content, but then you got to go home and we can't just come back and watch This Is Us all we want, uh, which we're, we're not super behind anymore. We're caught up. <laughs> but yeah, we have, we have all this content that doesn't put itself together, you know, so we got to do all that work. Um, but another piece of this is the comments we get. Some of the comments on YouTube, they can be pretty hurtful and like really take a toll on, on your mental health. Like, we get that people say like, oh, you got to toughen up. It's just part of being, putting yourself out there. But we really don't understand why it has to be that way. And why, why should like online bullying, like be like normalized. normalized? Yeah, that's the word. It's, yeah. it's, it's, we don't agree with that and we don't like that. So yeah, like we, just cause we share our lives doesn't give you an open invitation and we don't mean you. No, no. We not, mean others. Not you guys. Um, <laughs> an open invitation to like, pick on us, call us names, be mm -hmm. really cruel and hurtful. Like, I mean, for putting it bluntly, like we're making free content. Mm -hmm. And so if someone doesn't like it, like you can just leave. Like you don't have to tell us that you didn't like it. Like yeah. we work so hard on this. And so when people like nitpick or make like hurtful comments or like put down us personally, come in our appearance. appearance and stuff, like it just can be really, really We just tough. try to be so positive about everything. Um, so it's just hard when we get something negative back and you didn't have to say that it, it, it added nothing to your or our lives it's just you, you can, can just think turn it, it off. if you want to think it that's fine <laughs> that's great yeah, we know not fine. everyone's gonna like us and like our content but and that's fine but we just don't need you to tell us <laughs> yeah, it's just like your mom or your parents said if you don't have anything nice to say don't say it at all yeah what is some advice that you would give your 2018 self when we started this channel i think the biggest thing for me is, and it's something I've struggled with since like day one of my life, <laughs> is is like don't be embarrassed and like have pride in like what you're doing. Like don't let like talking in front of people, um, filming something in a place, like walking around with a big camera on you. Like don't be embarrassed. Like it's whether you have a hundred subscribers or a hundred thousand. Like be proud of what you do and like take pride in it and. And, and don't be afraid and go confidently which we both really struggle which with. which we still struggle with now and yeah like there are days where it's easier and days where it's harder yeah. and yeah we wish it was it's easier. like that imposter syndrome i guess for me it's like why am i making these videos like who am i to make them but you just got to be proud and push through it yeah don't be afraid i think my advice it goes back to something my dad said when we were in texas last over the winter and he he asked us a question he said do you ever just sit back or just stop and think about how lucky you are 
And yes, I mean, we know we are so fortunate. We are lucky. Like we are very grateful for everything we get to do. But that question has stuck with me ever since because we're so go, go, go. Got to get this shot. Got to get this photo. Got to write this thing that it's, we often aren't able to like fully live in the moment sometimes. And I think I would tell myself back in 2018, like live in the moment, like filming and photos like that can wait, like just enjoy what you're getting to do because that's the most important thing. And I, I just think we're often very go, go, go. And we don't often get to stop and just soak it all in. And so we've been trying to do that more. We had a two week period in February where we filmed basically every day for two weeks, which is usually a recipe for disaster with like our mental health and stress, but it had to be done. And we, for some, for some reason, what my dad said just had like really stuck with me during those two weeks and we had so much fun. And I just feel like filming was less work and more joy during those times. It just didn't feel so much like we weren't getting to actually experience things too. So we're trying to get back to that. We're trying to do less in a day when we're filming because then we can actually like spend the time to enjoy it mm -hmm. more. And I don't want to imply we don't enjoy it. I feel like, no. I feel like I'm seeming like negative. I just want to be real. Like mm -hmm. it, it can be hard at times, but yeah. So thanks dad for asking that question. Cause it's like really stuck with me and I'm trying to have it carry me through mm -hmm. during the days where maybe we're in a beautiful place, but we're just really stressed out. How do you find partnerships and how do they work? We've only really had three partnerships and all three of those are ones that we had reached out to. Although we do have one in September that reached out to us. That was a really good fit. So we're excited to do that one. And I guess just to give some background on like our sponsorship partnership philosophy, which does vary between creators, but just so you know where we're at, we only want to partner with things that are such a natural fit for us. Um, we don't really want to promote products unless it's like a few like dream outdoor brands or something that really provides value to us and we think would provide value to you. We mostly just want to partner with tourism boards. So that's what we've been doing and that's what we hope to do in the future. We want any partnership to feel so natural in our content that you would not know it was a partnership unless we told you, which we do legally have to tell you. So without us telling you, we want you to be like, oh, it's cool. They're just in Bend, which we wanted to go to anyway, having fun, like without knowing that Visit Bend worked with us on that. And as far as getting them, kind of our process, uh, they're really hard to get, or at least they have been for us. And kind of how we start is first, we just kind of look at the map, maybe what's along our way that we'd want to visit and uh, think if it's a good fit. And so what I'll do is I'll look at like their social media and I'll get on their website, their tourism website, and uh, I'll try to hunt down like a contact instead of sending it to just like their general like info at visit whatever. Uh, Cause that could just go to Black whoever <laughs> you want to, yeah, you want it to be very targeted. We research the destination and try to customize our pitch so that we can really share um, what we can offer a value to them. And then we also send along our media kit with all of our website stats and YouTube stats, things like that. And so we aren't really sure why some say yes, some say no, because we take the same approach with every one of them. Um, so I don't know. We wish we had some yeah. secret to share, like this is how you get a partnership, yeah. but we're still learning as we go and we get ignored very often. Yeah. Adam has like an email tracker so you can see if they've opened the email. Sneaky. Yeah, and so some of them open it and then they don't yeah, ever respond. <laughs> following up is also really good too. Yeah. I feel like we got at least one or two by just following up mm -hmm. um, and then they responded and we were able to make something happen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's tough. And I guess our advice is just keep trying, keep showing your value, you know, what and customize and it. Customize it. Thing. Yeah. Don't send the same thing to everyone. Really share that, you know, a little bit about the place, what excites you about the place and what you can offer. Also, um, try to look at their previous work. Like I said, look at their website and their, and their, um, social media, because some places like even big popular places don't work with influence, like influencers or content creators. So that could be a big thing. Like you don't even want to spend your time on. Yeah. That's a good point. As for how they work, we've had one that was a trade where basically they just gave us somewhere to camp and they helped us offset some expenses. But for the most part and the most ideal situation is that we get paid a certain rate for the content that we produce as well as get like lodging and food costs covered or reimbursed afterwards. Really what this enables is it enables us to make a better video because we get some financial support because we're funding all these videos by ourselves normally. Mm -hmm. And one thing we want to stress though is that no place so far and we would never let this happen is like you must go here, you must say this. Like they're not controlling our content. And one thing that we're kind of on the fence on with partnerships is like we really love having like create free What's creative that? freedom creative yeah. freedom <laughs> and so we don't want to ever work with someone who's going to try to limit what we can say or what we can do so just to make that clear that's not happening mm -hmm. but 
so far they've all been very flexible. We get to do what we want and then we're able to, you know, make more of a living doing what we love. Everyone we've done, we've, we would have gone there anyways, made the same video, said the exact same things, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Yeah. What video are you most proud of? I love making videos that are different than most of our videos. So I guess a couple examples are lobstering, the surfing video, the how to make cheese video. Those were all really fun because it's a challenge for us because so much is out of our control. Like I can't control how Adam's surfing out there or, you know, if we catch any lobsters. So a tour experience. Yeah. Like it gives us like a, we get to create more of a story and it's just fun to edit and it's definitely a lot harder. But for some reason, I mean, for some reason, those videos just never do as well. So that makes me kind of sad, but we're still going to keep trying to make them. <laughs> and as far as that other, after those kind of videos, I think Niagara Falls was a ton of fun. It was just such a fun experience. Just <laughs> the hurricane deck thing just still puts a smile <laughs> we on still, face We still just laugh thinking about it. Just how epic those waterfalls are. And they're just so iconic. And so the Niagara Falls one, and then also uh, the our road trip to Death Valley was just a ton of fun because we just had a really fun time that day seeing the snow. And then also when we were eating the chili, we had that cat, Chili the cat we call her, came up to us and just really wanted our chili. And then the, the burrows, the burrows yeah. yeah, like just when unexpected things happen like that, it just makes it, just takes it to the next level and really brings out smiles on us. Yeah, <laughs> we go into every video with a plan of yeah. what we want to film and we always hope something unexpected, a good unexpected yeah, will happen. Not windows yeah, breaking. Yeah, not windows breaking <laughs> because it just brings out more joy in mm -hmm, us, I guess, mm -hmm. and it's just fun and you weren't expecting it. So we like when that happens, but we can't control when unexpected yeah. things happen. Was there a specific video or moment that catapulted your growth? The first one that comes to mind is the van tour video. That one just crossed a million views, which I had been tracking that one for a while. <laughs> and it actually crossed a million views the day before we hit a hundred K. So now we have a hundred K and then we have a video that has a million <laughs> views. We got a pretty good jump start from that one. Um, that one took off, you know, from the beginning and it really helped us cause that was more early on in our YouTube careers. We also like have random videos that just do exceptionally well and you can never predict it, but we found a common theme and it tends to be cities or places that maybe aren't as popular. Uh, Tucson comes to mind. The Houston one did really well. Pittsburgh, Little Rock. I think they're all places that maybe like they don't get as many tourists or people don't vlog them as much. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what happens is a lot of the locals find the video and then it just blows up from locals. So, I mean, that's cool, I guess. <laughs> um, usually they're nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we found a trend with that. So we can never predict it, but sometimes the more like off the beaten path major cities or smaller cities do really well. Then the national park videos tend to do pretty well too. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice on growing a YouTube channel or blog? This is probably going to sound like such a cliche answer and maybe not helpful, but our biggest piece of advice is just do what you love, create what you love, and do not focus on the numbers. You obviously want to create high quality content that's valuable and you obviously want it to perform well, but if you focus so much on the numbers, you'll probably never be happy and you're also going to be comparing yourself constantly. YouTube's a grind and blogging is a grind. Like it's a long game. Like you, some people do blow up overnight, but most people do not. And like, we've been doing this three and a half years and we've just been consistent and trying to work hard every day and create content that we're proud of and that makes us happy. And it's helped keep us sane during the moments where, you know, things aren't going super well, because if you're going to compare yourself or just be shooting to try to get like a viral video or try to get X number of views, like there's just so much out of your control. You can't control what all the algorithms do. And so you'll just be unhappy. And, but if you're doing what you love, like we are doing, like we're super passionate about sharing travel that helps keep you going during the hard times. Also trying to get better over yeah. time too. I mean, we watch some other YouTube channels and take inspiration and kind of on a business side and maybe a little bit more shaded towards the website is um, a couple years ago, we purchased this course called Stupid Simple SEO, which laid out, you know, a good tutorial on how to really focus on SEO and up your SEO game on your website. Um, and so then we use that. And then also this keyword tool called Key, uh, Key Search, which uh, is one of the cheaper key keyword tools. And that really has helped us um, our, you know, our blog posts and our website really gain a lot of traffic over time. And that's really helped. Yeah. If we were starting blogging right now, that's the first thing we'd suggest to anyone yeah. learn SEO because yeah. we did not. And we had to go back and like update a ton yeah. of posts to try to get them to rank. And now we're switching to van life questions. What is an experience that you're grateful for on the road? I think the most obvious thing is seeing so many amazing places, 
all over the country and what really sticks out to me when I thought of this question was seeing just the amazing epic sunrises and sunsets and all these epic amazing places. Yeah, that's the number one thing about yeah. van life. I think for me, like, I'm more of a type A personality. I like to have a plan, you know, it can be more regimented, but van life has really helped me be more go with the flow. Just a lot of things don't go according to plan. You have to be flexible. There's a lot of uncertainty. And I think just being in this environment has helped in a lot of ways and like other aspects of my life, just be more chill. So I'm very grateful for that. I mean, that's not to say I'm always like, whatever, but I, I've found myself being a lot more go with the flow ever since starting van life. And even the moments when we shatter a window, it's like, I'm grateful for that moment in a way because it taught us how to be more resourceful and it was a learning lesson. Mm -hmm. So we just learn a lot and it forces us to grow. Do you have health insurance on the road? Health insurance is one of the worst things about being self-employed, especially being nomadic uh -huh. also. So when I quit my job, I stayed on Cobra for a bit, with, which basically means I had my plan from my employer still, because it was a great plan and it worked all over the US. However, it was like $1,100 a month for both of us, which was really expensive. So we spoke with an insurance broker and we got on one of the healthcare.gov plans, which those plans only really work in the state that you are from and even like the city like to go see the doctor you have to go see for some plans like your primary care physician in austin which isn't doable when we're here in washington right now so we added on this like accidental coverage plan as well so if i were to fall and slice open my hand again i can go and get help and get some money money towards that or get some of it covered but yeah health insurance is literally the worst yeah. what are some of the things you miss most about living in a traditional home i think the number one thing for both of us is your normal day-to-day -day chores take up your entire day when you're in van life. So we got to go to the laundromat to do our laundry, you go to Planet Fitness to shower and take a nice shower. If we take one in here, it's just super quick. Uh, go somewhere to upload a video, go dump our pee in our number two. <laughs> we just have to go to all these places all over town. And depending on what town you're in, there's lots of options. Depending on another town, there's you don't really have any options. So it's... It's, yeah, it, and it just takes up your entire day running all these errands everywhere. Whereas in a home, you can do your laundry, then you can go take a nice long shower, uh, run the dishwasher, do your dishes, upload your video, do all those things at the same time without even having to leave. Yeah, it it can be hard. We have, most of our days that we're not filming, we're basically just running around like crazy people trying to accomplish different tasks, and it it gets to be a little exhausting. It just kills the productivity. You can't yeah. get anything. We have done. a hard time getting work done yeah. on the short days. Yeah. Do you think van life works well for you too because of your personalities or do you think it's something most people could do? We definitely do not think van life is for everyone. First, you have to be okay with being in a small space, especially with your significant other. I mean, the van is cramped and not everyone would be willing to cut back on a lot of their items or want to be in such a small space. Also, like you just have to be flexible and have kind of more of an open-minded, flexible, go with the flow personality, which I naturally do not, but I've been able to adapt and like accept that where some people may not be willing to kind of change their ways a bit. So I think you definitely need to have a certain personality or be willing to do it. Um, especially when you're with like your husband, your wife, mm -hmm. your significant other, um, you're spending a lot of time together and you really need to like them and like want to be together. You don't get your own space, at least in a van like ours. So there's that, and then you just got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable yeah. and wearing a lot of the same clothes. And but it's something like, that, if you just embrace it, yeah, you'll love it. Just but go you, into it. With if you don't want to embrace it, then you're probably going to hate it. <laughs> Does Catherine ever drive? If not, why not? I have driven the van. I don't mind driving the van. I love driving in general, but typically how it works is whenever we're not filming and we're driving or doing anything, I'm working. So. Driving time is a great time for me to work on a video because I don't always need cell service to edit a video. So that's kind of our arrangement. He drives, I work, so that's just how it is. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the things that I do require internet, like adding the music to the video. So it just works out that way. One day recently off camera, I did drive for three hours. And she's a good driver. <laughs> Thank you. I think so too. <laughs> I drove for three hours because he was going to do music for a video, yeah. and, but then we had no service the whole drive. So I could have been working on something else. Yeah. So yeah, we just have to try to figure out like who needs the computer and who can drive. Why is van life so appealing to you? Compared to a traditional travel style, like staying in a hotel or an Airbnb, it's just really nice to be in our van. It's, it's our home basically. So we have our kitchen, we have our bathroom. We don't have to pack and unpack going into the hotel, coming back out. It, it, it's, 
it's just convenient. nice and convenient and comfortable. We can go into town. We can go out into the country. It's very versatile. It works for us. One of my favorite things is if we're just on a long drive and we just want to pull over and make some coffee or make food, mm -hmm. like we can super mm -hmm. easily. If we or have to go to the bathroom. If you go to the bathroom, yeah. you can just pull over anywhere yeah. and just go to the bathroom in the van, which is great because that's not always the case if you're traveling yeah. in like a regular car. How long do you plan to do van life? This was probably one of the most popular questions we got and our answer is big time indefinitely for the foreseeable future i don't know we would love to mix in you know international travel more within the year but definitely always coming back to the van we always want to keep this van we can't see it not be a piece of our life and our family yeah and our family <laughs> yeah so forever yeah, we have no plans <laughs> to stop so yeah. we're just gonna keep on going <laughs> Are you concerned about going back and living normal lives and not having one adventure after another? We honestly don't plan to ever live a normal life. Um, we would like to have a place of our own someday, which we'll talk about that more in a bit, but we still want the van to be a big part of our life and traveling to be a big part of our life. We just don't ever see ourselves living a more traditional life ever again. But we do, as now that we travel full time, like it's very exhausting and we do cherish those moments where we can live a more normal life. So when we go back to Texas, we try to be there for a couple months and we just soak up being, you know, having a full kitchen and Wi-Fi and showers. And we, we love those moments and we want to build in more of those moments into our life. And I think having a balance of it is like really healthy. We also think, um, so like we're always go, go, go. And we used to think like the all-inclusive resort type of experience wasn't for us. You thought we'd get bored? Yeah, get bored just sitting there and eating. But right now it, it sounds, sounds awesome. pretty dang good. It sounds really good. <laughs> How are you able to get alone time despite being together 24-7? This was also a very popular question. So the simple answer is I go and do the grocery shopping by myself. I go into the laundromat. I'll take Kona on a walk. And I stay here. That's how it is. <laughs> yeah. We're just always together. Uh, but we love it. But like Not complaining. Yeah. Truly love it. We're the best of friends. Mm -hmm. We have so much fun together. So we aren't like craving alone time. Yeah. But he can go play golf. He's yeah. played golf a few times by himself too. Yeah. But like even then I would like her to come. It just We just have stuff to do. So sometimes she'll hang back or whatever. Yeah. But I, we don't ever like want separate time. So it just works for us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not for everyone. But yeah. it works for us. How do you resolve conflicts in the van? To be honest, we don't have very many conflicts. We're very much on the same page about everything. The only time we really have conflicts, it's mostly just stress related. Like one of us is stressed out and kind of takes it out on the other, which is easy to do when you live in a very small space, but we're very, very communicative with each other. So if we're annoyed, we just tell each other because the van is kind of like a pressure cooker. And so if you're letting all this like tension build up, it's going to like explode in the wrong way. So we just are very honest and open with each other about everything. And, that's just kind of how we resolve it. And if we need space, we'll just do one of the things we mentioned walk, before. <laughs> <laughs> when things do not go as planned, like the window breaking, how do you stay positive? It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> we don't always stay positive. Yeah. I think we have like moments where we're really positive at first and then an hour later I'm crying because I'm so upset or stressed. And then we have times where we're really mad at first and then we just become positive. And I think it's kind of like a, a statement that you hear all the time, like, it's not it's what not, happens, it's, it's what, how yeah. you react to it or yeah, something like that. Yeah. And you're like, okay, stop. But I think that's true. That's like, true, yeah. you know, with the window, we had our little moment where we were upset and then we just focused all that energy, all the frustrated energy onto how are we going to fix this? So I think focusing on like what you can control and what you can do versus just dwelling, dwelling on, on what's, it, ups yeah. what's upsetting you. Don't it's, let the, the bad thing that happened that day define your whole day. Just accept it. Feel the emotion because it kind of sucks in the moment. It's but natural then, like, to be upset. Yeah, but then just, yeah, do what you can do and move on. Yeah, it's easier said than done. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we're switching to our final category of questions, which are travel related questions. And we're starting with the question that was asked the most What is the Montaña de Oro story? So I guess we teased this story like, a, a couple months ago in a video. So Montaña, I don't know how to say it, I never know how to say it. Montaña de Oro. Okay is a state park near San Luis Obispo in California. A few years ago, we stayed there and we alluded to our biggest travel mishap ever happening there. Although now I think the window is the biggest mm. travel mishap. And we said we would tell you guys the story when we hit 100K and Adam hasn't wanted the story to be told <laughs> ever because he thinks it makes him a bad husband. Um, yeah, we're gonna tell you the story right now. And it, I feel like we've overhyped it. I hope you find it interesting. We still think it was crazy, but yeah, if you don't find it interesting, just, just don't tell us. Just pretend you found it interesting. <laughs> 
But basically, this was back in like 2018, early 2019, pre-van life. I think that's important. We went to the state park. Uh, we were camping there. We went to the beach for a bit, but then I had to go edit a video. And so we didn't have cell service at the campground, so I couldn't do it there. So we drove into Los Osos to a Starbucks. Fun fact, we drove by this infamous Starbucks <laughs> on our most recent trip, which Fond was kind of funny. Um, so I go to the Starbucks and I'm just sitting there working. It's, you know, getting late at night. I'm there during like the, clo the last closing hours, essentially. And the first weird thing that happened is there was a man there who just made me feel very uncomfortable. He was just very like lingering near me and he just kept like talking to me and like asking me questions that you know Maybe were kind of personal like where are you from and just things that you maybe don't want a strange person to ask you But he also was just giving off a really like creepy vibe and you know You got to trust your gut in situations like that So the deal was Adam dropped me off there and then him and Kono went back to the campground So like nine o'clock rolls around and Starbucks is closing and I'm just like waiting for Adam to show up And he's not showing up and he's not showing up and it's, it's just me and the creepy guy and the Starbucks employees. And he's just hanging around still, too. He's not leaving either. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, what is happening? So he hadn't shown up, and it was, like, a minute or two after closing. So I just went up to the Starbucks employees and said, hey, my husband's coming. He's coming to pick me up. Can I just, like, wait in here? And I think we, like, communicated with each other with our eyes. Like, yes, this man is creeping us all out, too. So, like, yes, please stay here. You're safer. So they're cleaning, and I'm waiting there. And it's, like, 9.15, and Adam's still not there. And I'm freaking out because... My first thought was like, did he get in a car accident on the way back to the campground and like no one's notified me yet? Like that was my fear is like him and Kona were in danger. So I'm panicking at this point. It's 9.15, Starbucks employees are like, sorry, we have to leave. And I'm like, oh gosh, what am I gonna do? Just to give you reference, this is kind of a more remote area too. I mean, there's stuff around, but it's not like a hopping Small town. town, you know, hopping city. So thankfully there was like a grocery outlet or Rite Aid or something across the parking lot. So I went in there and I'm just like walking around, like waiting and waiting and I'm texting and calling him like crazy. It's all going to voicemail. So I call my mom. It's two hours later in Texas and I'm like, hey, like I'm okay, but Adam was supposed to come get me and he's not here and I don't know what to do. So I finally called an Uber, but it's important to know that there are no Ubers around here and there was one Uber. I got lucky there was one Uber, but he was 40 minutes away. So I had to wait like 40 minutes in this grocery store place or wherever I was for him to come get me. And then my mom's... A Did sorry. you mention there's no service at the campground? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So I knew he wouldn't like have service at the campground. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so I'm waiting for the Uber. He finally shows up. My mom, of course, is nervous that I'm getting in an, an Uber with a strange man. Late he was at night. A nice old man. Um, yeah, late at night. So I'm on the phone with my mom the entire Uber ride. And, um, you know, I told the guy what was happening just so he knew. Because I think he was like, why am I taking you to a random campsite by yourself? <laughs> but I eventually lost service on the drive. So I told my mom, like, I'll call you back once I know what's going on. So the man's driving me and... At this point, I think he's like a dad, maybe of daughters. So he's like, I'm not leaving you until I know that you're okay. And so I'm just nervous. Like, what if we get to the campsite and the, the car is not there? But thankfully, we pull up. The SUV is there. The tent is there. I open the tent. And there's Adam and Kona sleeping. So <laughs> I guess the mishap was the alarm went off to come pick me up. And he just, he just slept through it. Snoozed it. And he just kept sleeping Figured and sleeping. Figured out, hit snooze, and I'll wake up five minutes later. And no big deal. I'll go get her. Yeah. And he never did. So, yeah. um... I told the Uber driver I'm good. I was so pissed at Adam. And I know it was an accident. And it was a, just an accident. But I was just so scared. Like, what am I going to do? And if that Uber driver had not been there, I don't know what I would have done. Just waited for him to wake up, I guess. But, yeah, so I was very thankful for the Uber driver. And in my mad state, I made Adam drive me outside the park so I could call my mom and tell her we were all good. But, yeah, I don't know. It was a crazy night. It was a very embarrassing story. I did not want that told for the longest time. It's okay. But now, it was an accident. Yeah, like, it was now an accident, we laugh. But I do want a thank you from all the husbands out there for taking the uh, the 2018 Bad Husband Award. So you're welcome for <laughs> taking that off your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You're still the best. What are your plans after Alaska? Our plan after Alaska is to drive back down through Canada, spend some time in Washington and Oregon before we head back to Texas. We're not sure how long that piece of the journey, how long we're going to take to do that. But our goal is to have enough of a video backlog to get us through the holidays so that we can have that for us. And then we can focus on other work tasks and then maybe get some relaxing in. Yeah, Sounds we just want nice. to go back to Texas and sleep afterwards. <laughs> do you plan to do more international travel? 
This was also a very, very hot question. And the answer is a big heck yes. We want to go international. We are so excited. Uh, now that it's getting easier, you know, to travel abroad again, we are really hoping to be able to mix that in in the, in the foreseeable future, pretty near future. Um, we do have one trip lightly planned to go to Southeast Asia to visit a friend we have over there. Um, but nothing set in stone, so we're really hoping we can make that happen. Yeah. The thing about international travel is that... We have Kona, so mm -hmm. we don't want to go for too long. So we're trying to figure out, you know, how long we can leave her because my parents would be watching her. Also, depending on where you go internationally, it's pretty expensive. Yeah. You know, we used to go international a couple times, but we were like, on a vacation so like our budget was bigger so now we have to figure out you know what can we afford to do internationally like how long can we be gone like where can we go so there are a lot of factors with international travel but we definitely plan to do more that's going to be more of a goal next year mm -hmm. and then mixing in van trips in the u.s in between a similar question do you ever plan to take the van to baja or europe historically we were kind of no on the whole driving the van to baja thing but we know quite a few people who have done it and have had the best time a very safe time so we're definitely warming up to it and we're hoping to go one day with our friends jen and elliot so we'll see <laughs> and as far as europe it does sound really cool and really appealing i would love to do it but i think logistically it would be really tough you know first of all just getting the van over there would be probably pretty expensive and then just from our experience and just knowing a little bit about it it doesn't seem like the towns and the city centers are very going to be very well suited to a big van Giant like this. Sprinter yeah, van. I might want a smaller vehicle. Maybe road tripping between them might be okay, but I think just it would just be too it's tough. Possible. And then bringing Kona and dealing with the logistics of that, and yeah, it would just be too much. I think. I think we'd rather just go walk around yeah. towns, take the trains places. Yeah. It would just the be more, more enjoyable for one. us. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to settle down, and do you have a five-year plan? As far as settling down, our big plan is sometime in the future is buying some property and building a cabin on it. We're really wanting to come back to the PNW and we're really liking the uh, Bellingham area, which is just north of Seattle. It's like in between Seattle and uh, the Canada border. We really like that area, so that's that's our big master plan. But it's going to be a while it before is. that can happen. So until then, we're just going to keep on traveling. We have kind of learned over the last few years that you could think your life is going to go one way and then yeah. you decide you want to do something different. So we're not trying to like have, besides that plan, like in working towards that goal, mm -hmm. we're not trying to have like a ton of other plans because we just want to see where life takes us and just enjoy every second of it. Do you plan to do any meetups or hiking trips? We have been so lucky to meet so many of you guys out, especially at the national parks. That tends to be where we see most of you guys most often. And it always makes our day when y'all come say hi. But as for meetups, we have this rule that we do not share our location in real time. And that's a rule that we've created for our own safety and privacy, as well as to keep our families happy, you know, just so people don't always know where we are. So we always post delayed. Um, when we post something, we've already left that area. So a meetup would kind of break that rule because we'd be like attention world we will be at this exact place at this exact time and so it just doesn't work with that rule at this time well, with that said i think a hiking trip or like a day hike kind of a thing could be kind of interesting hadn't really thought about that um I don't know, doing like an activity like that with people is... It'd be fine. Yeah. Um, so. We're not sure how we would do it or if we ever would. It's not really something we've ever thought about and it's not going to happen anytime soon, but maybe sometime in the future. Yeah, no, it'd be really cool. Yeah. I mean, when if you ever see us out, please come say uh, hi. Sure, like, it yeah. totally makes our yeah. day and we just like freak out. Mm -hmm. So it, it means a lot to us. Mm -hmm. So we definitely want to say hi to you. Mm -hmm. We just currently aren't in the position to be publicizing where we're yeah. at. What are you most excited for in Alaska? Basically all of it, <laughs> but I think the things I'm most excited about are seeing glaciers and we have one glacier related activity book that I'm so excited about. Also just seeing wildlife, both in the water, on land. And we also have a couple backpacking trips we hope to do there, which I'm very excited about, but also very nervous because just backpacking in grizzly country really freaks me out. But we survived in Wyoming, so I'm hoping we <laughs> survive in Alaska. <laughs> I am just so pumped to see the massive mountains that will be surrounding us, the tundra, and just getting that full Alaska experience is going to be really fun. And then also getting to use my fishing rod, my new fishing rod out there, go fly fishing a bunch hopefully, and, and learn and catch some fish. What are your favorite state parks and campgrounds in Washington? 
We really like hiking and camping at Deception Pass State Park, which is on Whidbey Island. That's a really cool campground, just a beautiful area. And then another one that we just visited for the first time, which you'll see in a video soon, is Cape Disappointment State Park. That one was a really beautiful and Probably cool one too. Probably the best paid camp campsite we've ever yeah. had. It was amazing. <laughs> What percent of the places in Johnny Cash's I've been everywhere have you been to? <laughs> <laughs> if the list I found was accurate, we've been to 25 out of 92, which is I believe 27%. As you continue to travel, do you find yourselves trying to top the last place visited or do you just enjoy each destination in the moment? We just try to enjoy everything for what it is. We're not trying to compare places to each other. Sometimes we'll say like this kind of reminds us of this yeah. place just to give more context, but we try to enjoy every spot for what it is because we realize not every place is going to be Glacier or Italy. Every place is different, but we believe like every place has something special to it. And so when you're too focused on like, well, I've been somewhere nicer than this, you're not going to enjoy it. But we try to just really enjoy what makes that place special. And I think that helps us be really positive. People like wish we had more negative things to say, <laughs> but we, we just we don't because one, we don't want to bash anything like that's not that's just kind of not really fun to watch but we genuinely enjoy each place because we just try to soak up all that makes it what it is. Which place has amazed you beyond expectation and which one was underwhelming or overrated? We were really blown away with Minnesota's North Shore just because going into it, we just did not expect it to be that beautiful. The entire road trip up that North Shore was gorgeous from start to finish. Yeah, it was We loved awesome. it. As for like over overrated, or underwhelming. I feel like we're gonna get some heat for this. We really struggle to pick something because we do try to like, like we said, appreciate everything for what it is. But if we had to pick something, we'd say Moab, Utah. And it's not because we don't like Moab. Moab is a really cool small town. They have tons of good food there for a town of its size. And there are so many like awesome national parks and just other hikes in the area. It's a great place. However, the reason we picked it is just because it's getting so, so, so busy. The last time we were there, it was like midweek before school got out for the summer and it was just packed everywhere. The camps, the camping areas were all packed. It was just really, really crowded and which kind of took away a little bit for us. So, I mean, it's obviously popular for a reason and we have enjoyed our time there, but I think we enjoyed like Capitol Reef where it was a lot quieter mm -hmm. more because it just felt more naturey versus like super crowded. So we had to pick something. So that's what <laughs> we picked, but that doesn't mean we don't like Moab. It's just, I don't think we love it as much as some people yeah. do. Are there any spots that don't make the cut in your videos? Maybe it was too crowded or disappointing or the opposite. The spot is really good and you'd rather not share it. The first one that comes to mind is when we were in Maine after we uh, backpacked the Cutler Coast. So we went to this really neat lighthouse um, and we got there and like I said, after the backpacking trip, so we were super tired and it was just way more crowded than we were expecting because it was pretty far out there. And so we got there and we needed to talk about the lighthouse and get shots of it and we were just kind of exhausted and overwhelmed with how many people were there and we just did not feel like pushing through all that and so we kind of just enjoyed it for ourselves and cut it <laughs> and that's usually the reason we cut something is because we have like anxiety takeover mm -hmm. and we just can't get ourselves to push through it what is the best three to four day trip in the u.s for a long weekend there are so many options that we could have said for this because most places can be like explored at least to an extent in three to four days but i think two of the best options would be seattle and denver because one they're both really large airports so you can get a non-stop flight there easily you don't have to drive really anywhere far once you get there to get to your destination also there's so much to do you have like the city there's professional sports there's tons of nature national parks so you can home base in that area and then just kind of explore the general area for three to four days and see so much are you worried that you're going to run out of incredible places to visit in the United States? We are definitely not worried about that. There are still so many places we haven't been and probably things that we don't even know about. For so sure. no, we have no worries about that. We, there's still a lot to see and do. We definitely want to do more international travel yeah. though, but I mean, we have, we can explore the U S forever. So mm -hmm. there's always going to be something to see. What are some top travel tips for those with limited budget and time? We wrote down a handful of tips. So to make sure we don't miss any, we're just going to read them. But one, take advantage of long weekends. If you get certain holidays off, yeah, this could be a more expensive time to travel or busier, but if you're more worried about time, that's a good way to maximize your vacation days by taking one less day off. Um, also pick a place where there's a lot to do in one area so you don't have to drive all over the place. So kind of like the Seattle Denver thing we mentioned, um, they'll save you a lot of time. 
one of the cheapest ways to travel is to camp so if you're doing a road trip you know take your tent with you and stay out of the hotels and airbnbs is going to save you a lot of money or sleep in the back of your suv if you have SUV, one because yeah. we've done that before and that saves yeah. a lot of money yeah and then also uh cook as many meals as you can um so if you are staying in an airbnb and you have a kitchen or you have some kind of outdoor kitchen cooking setup you can take with you bring that with you because you're going to save a lot of money with eating cheaper cooking your own stuff instead of eating at a restaurant every time one philosophy that we're kind of like implementing a little bit more or wanting to is like eating out when it's a unique item you can't have elsewhere um it can be like you know maybe a really unique burger spot and so yeah you can splurge on that but if it's just a generic burger place or a generic pizza place maybe cook a meal instead because you can have that anywhere but if it's like a really unique item that's only for that area it's definitely worth Lobster the splurge in Maine. yeah yeah stuff like that also fast casual restaurants are always cheaper mm -hmm. and that's where we tend to go um it just We're saves just you money uh also take an early flight if you're going somewhere so you can have like a full day pretty much when you get there and same for flying home take a late flight those flights are never fun but it'll give you a little bit more time mm -hmm. And, and then, then find free activities. So most of the stuff we do in our videos are free or really cheap. You know, like national parks, you pay for the weekly pass, 30 bucks most of the time. Uh, if you go to a bunch of them, you get the yearly one, and that's still going to save you a bunch of money. State parks can be cheap. Um, parks in town. Um, yeah, just do as much free, cheap things as you can. Yeah. I mean, some museums like have free days. Yeah, that's like a good that. tip. Uh, we don't really go to a lot of museums yeah. because one they can be really expensive and two they're kind of hard to film mm -hmm. but um we love museums but we definitely would be selective on which ones yeah. because you can't do every museum every single paid activity mm -hmm. if you're on a budget if you had to pick one place to see again for the first time where would it be my pick is hawaii um i think seeing the the mountains and the ocean and just i want to experience that vibe the whole hawaiian vibe again for the first time because i just love it so much and it'd be really cool to to get that feeling for the first time again and a few people did ask if we're going to hawaii again and we don't have plans for it but we definitely want to go back i mean we love it there so much we used to go often um it just hasn't really been in the cards and it's not the cheapest of trips so we will get back there eventually i think for me my answer would be glacier national park the first time we drove into glacier it was before sunrise but i remember as we were driving in and it was getting lighter out like seeing the mountains for the first time and just being like <laughs> Wow. <laughs> a huge thank you once again for 100,000 subscribers. So like, cool. So crazy to us, and we couldn't do this without nope. you. Because of you and your support, we get to do what we love for a living, and it just means the world to us. So we are very grateful for you. And if we did not answer your question or you thought of a new question, please comment mm -hmm. it below because we will answer it. And yeah, thanks for sticking around in this yeah. video because it's probably very long because <laughs> we are not good at being brief. <laughs> and in our next video, we are sharing an adventure that I planned. And I had no idea. It was a surprise and it was a lot of fun, so check it out. I can't wait. <laughs>